Okay, uh, let's talk about blood pressure. And I suppose we should start by uh, talking about what we mean by blood pressure. Uh, blood pressure is the force that's generated by the contraction of the ventricle. And we're going to talk about the force supplied by the contraction of the left ventricle because what we're looking at today is the systemic blood pressure. That's the blood pressure that uh, you get taken when you go see your, uh, your health care provider and uh, she takes your blood pressure. That's the force provided by the contraction of the left ventricle. And if we're going to talk about how the blood pressure is maintained, uh, we need to discuss how the body knows what your blood pressure is. Because if you, if you don't know what someone's blood pressure is, then you don't have any way to adjust it. You have to know the body has to have a way of sensing the blood pressure in order to adjust the blood pressure. And it uh, turns out that the uh, aortic arch and the carotid arteries have stretch receptors in them that send a signal up to the brain, up to the brain, that tell the brain what your blood pressure is. So there are actually stretch receptors in these vessels that tell the brain what your blood pressure is. So let's start with that basic information. And then your brain has some ways to manipulate your blood pressure. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So there are four factors that control your blood pressure. The first is the uh, viscosity. Viscosity is sort of a fancy way, sort of a fancy way of talking about the thickness. So you think of chiro syrup as being viscous and uh, the viscosity of your blood is mainly determined by your hematocrit which is the percent of red blood cells by volume in your blood. Well that's something that's pretty much fixed and in the normal situation you can't adjust that one way or another. The second factor that uh, controls your blood pressure is the blood volume. So the intravascular volume uh, is a control of your blood pressure and for both of these factors an increase in the viscosity or an increase in the volume leads to an increase in the blood pressure and volume like viscosity is not a factor that you can control from moment to moment it certainly has clinical significance because if your patient is uh, bleeding for whatever reason, the patient has uh, had an accident, uh, some trauma is causing bleeding, or there's post-operative bleeding, the, the blood volume will decrease and that will drop the blood pressure. Let's talk about the things that you can control on a short-term basis. And those things are uh, the cardiac action, cardiac action and the cardiac action just means what the heart is doing. So a very simple way to look at this is the more blood the heart pumps out the higher the blood pressure. And we have a way of describing uh, how much blood is pumped out and we term that the cardiac output. So the greater the cardiac output, if the cardiac output goes up, the blood pressure goes up. And the cardiac output uh, is the, the product of the heart rate. So the heart rate is how many times the heart contracts in one minute the heart rate, well, HR for the heart rate, and how much blood is pumped, the amount of blood that's pumped 
each time the heart contracts and we call that the stroke volume. So you could say that the cardiac output equals the heart rate times the stroke volume. And finally, the last thing that we want to mention for uh, blood pressure control is the peripheral resistance. And the peripheral resistance uh, refers to the force opposing blood moving through the vasculature. Peripheral resistance. So the smaller the vessel, the vessel gets smaller, that increases the peripheral resistance. And if the peripheral resistance goes up, the blood pressure goes up. So those four factors uh, control the uh, blood pressure. So uh, this is a rather brief uh, uh, look at blood pressure control. We'll have a little more to say about how the body can adjust the blood pressure uh, in our next, uh, in our next uh, video.